Today at Manchester Theatres, I should be so lucky because I am here chatting with Billy Roberts, who has only gone and landed one of the lead roles in the brand new musical, I Should Be So Lucky. It is from the hit factory of music, Stock Aitken and Waterman, a whole back catalogue of songs written by Debbie Isaac, and it is coming to the Manchester Opera House from the 2nd of November, premiering here, which is next week. We we cannot wait. Now, Billy has worked with Debbie before on the Nativity musical, but he's also done a whole host of other shows. We're talking Rock of Ages, Titanic, and other family classics such as The Wizard of Oz, Joseph and His Technical Dreamcoat, and Summer Holiday. But talking of summer holidays, you are going to be bringing a little bit of sunshine to our rainy Manchester skies as of next week with I Should Be So Lucky. So thank you for joining us, Billy. My pleasure. I don't look, it doesn't look like summer now. I'm in a woolly hat and a hoodie. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't be so lucky this morning. As, as For people that don't know, today is our first, uh, so we left the rehearsal room yesterday um, and then tomorrow we go to Manchester and then we start teching and getting the show ready for previews. Um, so it's been a mad time. So you can probably see I'm quite tired. <laughs> I bet you are, yeah, but it is happening and we are excited. So the tagline for the show is um, the wedding is off, but the honeymoon is on. So it kind of sounds a little bit like a romance, romance, grab your besties, go and have a bit of fun. So can you tell us about the story? Right, okay. What can I say without saying too much? So <laughs> story, um, the story is about a couple called Nathan and Ella. I'm so lucky to be playing Nathan and the amazing Lucy May is playing Ella. And it's uh, about a story where she's jilted at the altar and then she decides to go, well, her family convinced her to go on the honeymoon with them without me. Um, and then, but that's the main storyline, our love story, but there are so many more stories around it. So, you know, you see developments of things that the family are going through as well. And something Debbie said really early on, which is there's so many stories in the show that, so many people from so many different walks of life can relate to in the show, you know, um, <clears throat> love of losing someone, you know, uh, current love. Um, th there's so many, there's so many aspects of, of the show where people really can relate to and so many beautiful relationships that go throughout the show. Friendships as well. That, you know, your nan, your mum, your dad, your sister, um, as I just said, your best friend. Um, so there's so much to relate to in the show, but yeah, in a nutshell, you know, it all starts uh, if you've seen the trailer, yeah. that's how it starts and then the story develops. But I really, I could go more into it, but I don't want to say too much. I want to leave it completely simple when you come to watch because uh, it's it's fun. It's fun. There's a lot of emotion to it as well. There, there are some real emotional moments, um, but there's some really laugh out loud moments. And obviously the music itself, is just it's so much fun. Oh, so yeah. it, I, I think that's a brilliant way to put it. I think we'll be bringing sunshine uh, to Manchester in November. Yes, we love it. And obviously you've mentioned there that you're playing Nathan. So um, I was going to say, but I think you kind of told me a little bit there, um, who jilts who, but it sounds like maybe you you are the one. So are we, do we are we allowed to root for you? Do we like you? Do we find out nice reasons well, maybe? Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Um, obviously, when you see that, my natural instinct was going, the audience are going to hate me. But there's a reason, there's yeah. a reason. And you'll have to come see the show and find out why. But it all comes from it all comes from the love he has for Ella. Um, uh, and but he knows he's made a terrible mistake, and then the show is trying to win her back. Um, so yeah, that's I, I, honestly I can't say too. Much. I don't want to say too much, but um, no. but yeah, it's, it's funny you said that because I remember early on saying to Debbie, "God, the audience are going to hate me. They're not going to be rooting for me." But I think when you watch it and you you realise, I think you'll, yeah, I'm hoping that uh, they'll realise it was for a reason. It all comes from a good place. And then yeah. now he he'll do anything he can to win her back. Yeah. It, yeah. No, that's that's OK. We'll, we'll take that. That is he's, um, he's doing it for the right reasons. But, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, but also what I wanted to ask you about was obviously the creatives behind this. I mean, you've got Debbie Isaac, who's written all of the nativity things. You've got Stock Aitken and Waterman. Jason Gilkinson from Strictly, who's done the choreo. I mean, what you must have really wanted this part, right? How Tell us how you found out that you'd got, you, you'd got it. What happened? Honestly, it's, it, it was, uh, it's been crazy. So 
obviously I worked uh, the first time I worked with Debbie was in 2019. Um, I did the UK tour and London stint of Nativity the Musical, and I, I covered Mr. Madden's. Um, and uh, Scott Page, who's in I Should Be So Lucky, he was Mr. Poppy. So, um, and I had the most amazing time, and I saw her work in the room, and she just worked, she's completely different to anybody else. Um, you know, obviously in a show like that, there's like 50 odd kids that she has to work with as well, but you know, you talk to them like adults, and I, if you said that somewhere, you go, well, that wouldn't work, but it's just, it's yeah. gold. See the way it went, it, you know, she's just, a, she's, she is, um, I never really can find the right word to explain Debbie when she's working, but it, it, it's, it, it's just amazing. Um, and it's true gold what she does. So I'd worked with Deb and then luckily I was so grateful she asked me to come back and play Mr. Madden's last year, which was at that point was the dream part. And I, I couldn't believe my luck. And I had the most amazing time, most amazing company. I was at the Birmingham Rep. We were there for like 12, 13 weeks, I think. Um, I met my partner uh, from that show. Like I, it was the most wonderful, wonderful uh, experience. Um, and then when we were doing that, Debbie, I, I knew that they'd done a workshop for it and then it had been announced. And I said to Deb, oh God, I'd love to do that. She said, I think it'd actually be right for the part, for Nathan. So um, I did some tapes for ATG, the producers, and uh, and for uh, Stock Aiken and Waterman. And then about three or four months later, I was, I was on Titanic at this point, um, had no idea what was going on. And then she came to see me in the show and then said to me, we can come into casting. So I did another tape. And then literally like four days later, I got a phone call. And they were just like, uh, yeah, we'd, they'd like to offer the part of Nathan. I was just like, um, I'm so grateful. And again, you still go to the thing, I, I don't understand why this is me. The only thing I maybe hope is that, uh, I guess the the way they vision Nathan maybe is sort of how I am anyway. You know, I'm sort of trying to base certain aspects of Nathan of how I am in my normal life anyway. Um, and the songs, my voice type, uh, these are the songs that I've been singing. I was I was born in the wrong era. These are the songs that I've been singing since I was a kid. I, I have that sort of voice type. So I'm hoping that's the reason why I got the job. And I, I just, I, I, the one thing I can't wait for the show is to sing these songs eight times a week. I just love um yeah. that was it was a bit of a bit of a mad mad one you know you have sometimes we have to go in for like 10 rounds for shows in and out yeah. in and out so this was a crazy experience i think also because i was on tour they knew it would be hard for me to keep coming back and stuff so yeah did a few tapes and then thank praise the lord um i got the job you got the job i mean it is it's it's the whole thing itself almost feels like a spin-off film or movie that or musical that you could make about the way i mean you, you go in you like Oh yeah, my work colleagues today. Yeah, you know Debbie Iser, Pete Waterman, Jason Gilkison. You know most of us get Keith, the maintenance man, who shows his bull crack or something. You know it's insane. And then Kylie. I mean, oh. I've seen the trailer of when you're all, you know, doing a photo shoot, and she casually pops in. Tell me everything. Tell me all about meeting Kylie. This is the really sad part for me. That that was the one NA I had for oh. the entire. I had my. Uh, my partner's sister's wedding it's obviously been booked in for ages and it obviously was Kylie's schedule there's only if she has one day that's coming in um and it just so happened to, so I wasn't there I oh wasn't no there to her. no but look I, the, the best part was talking to the cast after and they just said yeah. it was crazy you know standing there and then Kylie Minogue walks in and I, I said to Lucy May as well like for her then she, Kylie obviously watched a few of the segments that they'd already put together mm -hmm. in the weeks and this may singing her songs in front of her um so yeah the, the, it's just amazing but I quick, i'd like to quickly talk about more of the creative team actually as well i've spoke about deb which is amazing jason is just like a dream he's just the loveliest man for for who he is and what he does yeah. um just to be the most down-to-earth man just so lovely and cares he cares about us so much um and he always wants to work to your strengths you know if i say to him Oh, because I, I trained as a dancer, so I, I do love to be able to dance whenever I can in the show. And so you say that, it's like, right, okay, you can do this, do that. You know, he's so open to those sort of things. And our musical director, George Dyer, this is the this is actually the fourth time I've worked with George. Right. Um, and he is, I've never known anything. I don't think he sleeps. I don't think he's <laughs> up at night doing arrangements. Um, and he's doing a lot at the moment. So he's so busy. But with this... Um, Biggest compliment I give to George is that we'll be running things. And, you know, Debbie might have said just before we do this scene, do you know what? Maybe we should do this scene in this way. I think it should be a lot um, 
a lot more emotion to this scene, a lot quieter, a lot into, a lot more, uh, much more intimate. And George will just start playing the score and just there and then come up with so with you know songs that were played like four scenes ago, but go back into it, you know. And, I, and he will just sit there and do it, and it'll be like a masterpiece. It's just um, yeah, I, it's 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 only when you know you talk to lovely people like you, you, you do go blimey. The, the creative team is it's actually yeah. actually mad. Um, and hopefully the audience will come and see that the show is what it is because of that as well. And a cast as well. The cast are oh my goodness. so good. Like, so good. I couldn't actually, but I knew a few people because I knew Scott, so I knew Scott was doing it and me and Lucy May were working together. So, you know, that just happened that we both got that together. Um, uh, who else? Gemma Churchill I did Nativity with. Jamie Chapman I did Nativity with. Um, a couple of other guys I knew as well. But then when the full cast is coming out, like Matt Croak, like, just, you know, Giovanni, these people, Ada Carter, they're just all insane. Um, so I, th I think we've hit the jackpot with that as well. And I think it, the lovely thing is, obviously, it's, it's early on and we're all going to be touring together and you become a family, but yeah. everyone, there's a real good uh, atmosphere in the room. And I think the combination of all of that is what we felt. So I was lucky, lucky enough to be at the press launch for this. And oh. yeah, and I, and I think that the combination of all of that, this creative team this um amazing cast and the way that the music like you were saying with George it's been given this musical theater makeover and when you and Lucy May came on with the cast and started singing especially for you I got goosebumps on my goosebumps I mean this is my like I was a primary I was at like school when I when all of this came out and um it was so magical and I was just like, oh my gosh, someone's gone into my head and made a musical. Um, are there any songs in the show that kind of give you that feel? Well, I've I've always been, I've always been a big Rick Astley fan anyway. Like <laughs> never get up to a song I've been singing since I was a kid. And then obviously Rick sort of like really over the last couple of years, really sort yeah. of made, hasn't he? You know, and he's just so good. And I don't think people realise how how good his voice actually is. So obviously to be able to sing Never Gonna Give You Up is just crazy. But uh, actually going way back to the start, when I was, my first sort of introduction to knowing I wanted to do this for a living was um, I was in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang in, at the London Palladium uh, when I was 12. And Jason Donovan was Cracks His Pots. No way. So I've always obviously known of Jason. Like I, I worked with Jason as a kid. Obviously I've, I've never seen him since. I'm praying that like he'll come see the show so I can see him. But um so especially for you is definitely one when the music first starts and the harmonies first start coming in before Lucy May does the first bit. That's definitely one I don't think will get old. And I'm, I just, I know that will be the song where audience members will sit there, like you just said yourself, and it, it will take them back to when they first remember it. And that's that's the best thing about this music. I I really believe because I have it with songs when I was growing up. If I hear them now, um, you know, like for, for instance, Westlife. I was obsessed with Westlife when I was a kid. If I ever hear Westlife on the radio, sometimes I can remember where I was when I first heard that song. And I think this show will really do that to so many people when they come to watch. Sit there and they'll go, oh my God, you know, uh, remember when that came on on our first date or remember when we first heard Kylie sing that on the radio and, and that's what's so beautiful about it. So I, there's a lot of songs. That, another great thing are songs in the shows that I didn't really know. Okay, and, yeah. I've come some of my favourites. So me and Lucy May sing a duet in the first half um, that I'd never heard before. And it was um, uh, Kylie and, I'm so sorry, I forgot his name, something Washington, I can't remember his name. Uh, he was uh, an American soul singer, really. Mm. And it is the song is absolutely beautiful. So, you know, that's another one that I'm going to, I just can't wait to sing every single night. It's going to be amazing. And one of the other things that I wanted to ask you about, you've been talking about, obviously, all these other different shows that you've done. Um, and their existing shows what is it like creating an original role and kind of just going this is me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know I was talking to my girlfriend about it the other day you know it's when you do a show you know I so for instance I did Rock of Ages it was a new production of it but Rock of Ages was a hit on Broadway and was a hit in the West End so I guess there's those aspects there of you know what does work what doesn't work and you can make your own you know, the new creative teams can put their own spins on it. But, you know, as a, as a format, it works. I did Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz has been done for years, you know. Um, whereas, like you say, with this, it's it's uh, it's amazing. For, for all of us to be able to say that we were the original cast of this show yeah. is something that, you know, no one can ever take away from you. And, and I count my lucky stars every day, and I'm so grateful for that. 
it's terrifying of course it is because you know you go in every day and you know is this going to work like you, you know are the audience going to like me you know it's all those sort of things but the main word's exciting um and i think now we'll start we, we you know we did our final run yesterday uh, in the rehearsal room and then obviously now we go to tech and i think as the days go on it will start getting to that feeling and we need the audience now we yeah. need that audience. um which i think will com complete the show i think the show won't be complete until we do have that live audience um but yeah it's just, it's just exciting exciting is the best word to put there's loads of elements to it but um it's yeah to and I, and for me on a personal level just so so grateful when you're a kid or when you first come out of college the dream would always be to originate a part in a brand new musical um and something like this with a back catalog of music like this so yeah i'm just unbelievably grateful and just um i'm, I'm sure i'll be walking off the stage every night still not believing it's actually me well, I was going to say, you mentioned the audience there. Um, I, I think, you know, you've got this show and I I might be wrong, but I have a feeling that the minute you put it in front of that live audience with all this music, it's going to take on a whole other life form of its own as well. I mean, have you, any of you, I mean, Manchester audiences are, are known for this at the minute. <laughs> so is it is it something you're all kind of prepared for and you're just going to roll with or? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think... Um... One great thing with Debbie is that her shows are so fast paced that uh, I think with with the elements of the stories with some of the songs, there might be points where some, you know, you might go, oh, you want to sing along to it. But I feel like it probably only be towards the end, which yeah. all the members really feel like they want to sing. But I mean, you've always got to prepare yourself when you're singing songs this famous and this well known. And like I just said, that means so much to so many people on a Saturday night in Manchester, you know. I know, it's going to be. Um, well, but no, you're, you're always prepared for that sort of thing. Rock of Ages is one of those shows where yeah. sometimes, you know, sometimes you'd be, I'd want to be like, guys, can you be quiet? I'm trying to sing. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to say, let's just put it out there now. You know, come along, have a great time. Don't sing it and let, let you, we want to hear you. You're the people who know what you're doing, you know, yeah. just kind of have a boogie. But, and is there, is there that kind of opportunity at the end if we got like the sort of melody or can you not say or will we? I uh, well, well, the, uh, what I can say is the, at the end of the show, two of the most iconic Stock Aiken and Walkman songs will be there. And I'm sure people want to be dancing. Yeah. Um, and it, it definitely, we definitely will want to have that sort of party feel. Um, and then also, you know, with the bows, there'll be a bit more as well. So, yeah. um, so we'll uh, people will definitely, definitely have that opportunity. Yes. Uh, just not in the first 20 minutes. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, well, do you know what? I've already got multiple sets of tickets to come and watch the show. <laughs> so, really? Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've, I've got, I'm coming a few times. So with different sets of people, because they're like, well, I can't go on that day. I'm like, well, I'll come with you again on that day. That's fine. <laughs> so, yeah. So I will be there um, behaving myself in all the right places. Um, 20 minutes in, I see you standing up singing. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Woo! With the pink flamingos around the head. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Billy, we cannot wait. Thank you so, so much for chatting with us today. I was already excited and now I'm kind of like brewing on next week. Um, honestly, I can't wait for this show. So thank you so, so much. Um, and all the best. Is there anything that you want to say before we go? No, it's lovely talking to you. Um, can't wait. To, please make sure you come to, uh, to see us after as well. I'd love to see you. Um, oh. so, and just to everyone in Manchester, I can't wait, you know, Manchester started becoming sort of the home of new musicals to start up, which I think is a really amazing thing yeah. what the theatre is doing um, in Manchester. So uh, I just can't wait, can't wait. And uh, just, yeah, please come, please come just for a, a real fun night. Um, yeah. Just to remember all these amazing songs. Well, we cannot wait either. And we are never going to give you up. So we can't wait to see you next week. Thank you so, so much. All the best. breaking and I can't go on faking the fantasy that you'll be mine <gasps> I'm dreaming that you're in love with me I'm sorry like we're in love with you but dreaming's all I do where were you going on your honeymoon Turkey? Turkey? No, Turkey! 
the wedding's off, but the honeymoon is on! If only we could